Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We are interested in these two products. The first product is from k equal 1 to n, 1 over k squared, that's the index of the product, plus s squared, s is a given real number, divided by n squared, and n is the number of terms in the product, and then we take the nth root of this quantity, multiply the product by n squared, and then take the limit as n tends to infinity. Let's take this n squared inside. Rather than having n squared here, we can put here 2 to the power 2 over n. When this term is multiplied by itself n times, we get the n squared that is outside. Then we can make the n squared enter into the bracket. So this is a limit as n tends to infinity, the product k from 1 to n, n squared over k squared plus s squared. And this is to the power 1 over n, like here. Add and subtract 1, and then there is s squared plus 1. We can take it outside. We don't have k here, which is the index. We can write this bracket as s squared plus 1 times 1 plus 1 over s squared plus 1 times n squared over k squared minus 1. Both brackets are raised to the power 1 over n. When this term is multiplied by itself n times, we get s squared plus 1. So we have s squared plus 1 and then the limit as n tends to infinity. Now our product is the nth root of 1 plus n squared over k squared minus 1 divided by s squared plus 1. Because exponential is a continuous function, we can write this as s squared plus 1 times the exponential of the limit of the logarithm. We have s squared plus 1 multiplied by e to the power limit as n tends to infinity. When we take the logarithm, we have the summation k from 1 to n and then 1 over n log 1 plus n squared over k squared minus 1 divided by s squared plus 1. This is what we have here. The idea now is that we have a summation k from 1 to n and inside the sum, n squared over k squared can be written as k over n all to the power minus 2. And then we have this outside factor, which is 1 over n. In the limit, as n tends to infinity, this is a Riemann sum. This is the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus s squared plus 1 in the denominator. And here upstairs, we have u. This is the dummy variable of integration to the minus 2 minus 1 du. This is our integral now. This is integral from 0 to 1 log we can have a common denominator, s squared plus 1. In the numerator, we have s squared plus 1 plus u to the minus 2 minus 1. That's s squared plus u to the minus 2 du. This is our integral. We started with the limit of a product. Then using the exponential, we converted it into a limit of a sum. And this sum turns out to be a Riemann sum. We can convert it into an integral. And now the final step is to carry out the integration and write it as a function of this parameter, which is s. Let's do integration by parts. So there will be a term here, u log s squared plus u to the minus 2 over s squared plus 1. And then we need to take the limit of this as u tends to 0 plus and as u tends to 1 minus. Minus, and then we have the integral from 0 to 1 of u. Then we need to differentiate this guy. The differential is s squared plus 1 over s squared plus u to the minus 2. And then we have s squared plus 1 here in the denominator, and the derivative of this is minus 2 u to the minus 3. This term goes with that term. We have minus 2 and minus 1, that's 2, then integral from 0 to 1, u times u to the minus 3, that's u to the minus 2, over s squared plus u to the minus 2 u, to the u, and this is 2 integral from 0 to 1, 1 over u squared s squared plus 1 du. So now we need to find the limit of this quantity and also to find this integral. If u approaches 1, then this u is 1, and what we have inside the logarithm is s squared plus 1 divided by s squared plus 1. That's 1. And the logarithm of 1 is 0. Thus, when we tackle the upper limit of integration, we just get 0. What we should do is to evaluate the limit as u tends to 0 plus of this quantity. And we have a minus sign here because this is the lower limit of integration. What is this limit? We can take this u here and write it in the denominator as 1 over u. As u tends to 0 plus, the denominator tends to plus infinity. Let's look at the numerator. Inside the logarithm, we will also have a quantity that grows without bound as u tends to 0 plus. We are in an infinity over infinity situation. Let's apply L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of 1 over u is minus 1 over u squared. The derivative of this logarithm, we did it when we did integration by parts. So here it is. Now simplify. This is limit as u tends to 0 plus. What do we have here? We have in the denominator s squared plus u to the minus 2. And then in the numerator, we have u squared times u to the minus 3, that's u to the minus 1. If we multiply numerator and denominator by u squared, 
we get u over s squared u squared plus one. Now, if we take the limit, the denominator is non-zero. The denominator tends to one as u tends to zero, while the numerator tends to zero. Then this is equal to zero. This term here is zero, and our integral is basically this integral here, which is a standard integral that can be represented in terms of the inverse tangent function. And it is written as such, assuming that s is not equal to zero. Our final result is that this limit is a term that we have isolated from the beginning, which is s squared plus one times e to the power two over s ten inverse s. Note that if s tends to zero, then 10 inverse s over s tends to 1. And so this quantity here, this is e squared when s tends to 0. And this is actually the value of this product if from the very beginning we put s equal to 0. It is equal to e squared. If s is equal to 0, then we have a limit as n tends to infinity, n squared. The product of k is factorial of n so in the denominator we get the factorial of n to the power 2 over n this is this limit here if we set s equal to 0 how can we evaluate this limit there are several ways of doing this limit one of them is to do sterling and so this limit is limit as n tends to infinity of n squared and then here we have 2 to the power n what is factorial as n gets very large it is square root 2 pi then we have the square root of n that's n to the 1 half then we have n to the power n and then we have e to the minus n. This is an asymptotic expression for the factorial of n as n tends to infinity. Now, this is a constant number to the power 2 over n. As n tends to infinity, this tends to 1. Also, n to the power 1 over n tends to 1 as n tends to infinity. Then we have n to the n to the power 2 over n. That's n squared. This will eliminate the n squared in the numerator. Finally, we have e to the minus n to the power 2 over n. That's e to the minus 2. And this will be the result of this limit here. It will be e squared. This is our final expression, and it is valid for every s with the understanding that if we want to evaluate this function at s equals 0, we take the limit as s tends to 0, and we get e squared. Now we have this infinite product involving the Lucas numbers. The Lucas numbers start with 2, then 1, and then we add them to get 3, then we add 1 and 3 to get 4, we add 3 and 4 to get 7, and so on. Like the Fibonacci sequence, each Lucas number is the sum of its two immediately previous terms. We start indexing from 0, so L0 is equal to 2, L1 is equal to 1, and then Ln is equal to Ln minus 1 plus Ln minus 2 if n is greater than 1. We can solve this difference equation with those initial values, and we get that the nth Lucas number is the golden ratio, phi to the power n plus minus phi to the power minus n. Phi, again, is the golden ratio. This is 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. In our infinite product, we have L 2n plus 1. That's the golden ratio to the power 2n plus 1 plus minus the golden ratio to the power minus 2n plus 1. This is an odd integer. Minus 1 to the power an odd integer is minus 1. In our case here, L 2n plus 1 is the golden ratio to the power 2n plus 1 minus the golden ratio to the power minus 2n plus 1, like this. Let's do what we have done for the first product. Let's take this product and write it as e to the power, the logarithm of this infinite product, which is summation n from 1 to infinity, the logarithm, I will write this ratio as 1 plus 1 over L to n plus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over L to n plus 1. The benefit of doing this is that this is a representation of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function. We have tangent inverse x, where x is between minus 1 and 1, is 1 half, and then the logarithm of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. We have n starting from 1, so this is L3, and L3 is equal to 3. The quantities that we have here are one-third or less. Thus, we can write down this logarithm in terms of tensh inverse. Specifically, this is e to the power 2, and then we have summation n from 1 to infinity, tensh inverse of 1 over L to n plus 1. There are many sums involving the inverse tangent and the inverse hyperbolic tangent functions that can be converted into telescopic sums, and so they can be evaluated easily. And the secret in doing this is this property of the tensh inverse function. Tensh inverse of x minus tensh inverse of y is tensh inverse of x minus y divided by 1 minus xy. We have tensh inverse 1 over L to n plus 1. And now we know that this is the expression for L to n plus 1. This is tensh inverse 1 over 
the golden ratio to the power 2n plus 1 minus the golden ratio to the power minus 2n plus 1. Can we write this in this form here? Let's multiply the numerator and denominator of the argument of tangent inverse by phi to the minus 2n plus 1. So we have in the numerator phi to the minus 2n plus 1. And then here we have 1 minus phi to the minus 4n minus 2. The golden ratio satisfies that phi squared is equal to phi plus 1. Divide both sides by phi. So phi is equal to 1 plus phi inverse. This means that we can write 1 as phi minus phi inverse. This is very helpful here. We have tanh inverse, and then we have this phi in the numerator. We can imagine that this phi to the minus 2n minus 1 is multiplied by 1. This 1 can be written as phi minus phi to the minus 1. And the denominator is 1 minus phi to the minus 4n minus 2. This is tanh inverse of phi to the minus 2n minus phi to the minus 2n minus 2 divided by 1 minus. We can split this term into phi to the minus 2n times phi to the minus 2n minus 2. This is exactly what we need. x minus y divided by 1 minus xy. Two terms, two quantities. We have their difference in the numerator and then 1 minus their product in the denominator. Now, by this property of the inverse tanh function, we can take this and write it as tanh inverse phi to the minus 2n minus tanh inverse phi to the minus 2n minus 2. What do we have right now? Our goal is this infinite product n from 1 to infinity, l to n plus 1 plus 1 over l to n plus 1 minus 1. We wrote this as e, and then we have an infinite sum. We converted the logarithm into the inverse hyperbolic tangent function. So this is e to the power 2 summation n from 1 to infinity. And then we have tangent inverse 1 over l to n plus 1. But now we can write this as e to the power 2 and then summation n from 1 to infinity. We have tangent inverse phi to the minus 2n minus tangent inverse phi to the power minus 2 times n plus 1, like this. And this is a telescopic sum. This means that this summation is equal to the first term when n is 1, we have tanh inverse phi to the minus 2. And then if we imagine that our sum stops at big N, then the other term will be tanh inverse phi of minus 2 times big N plus 1. And we need to take the limit as big N tends to infinity. As the argument of tanh inverse tends to 0 as n tends to infinity, tanh inverse tends to 0. This limit is 0. And our result is e to the 2 tanh inverse phi to the minus 2. Now we can write back tanh inverse using logarithms. Tanh inverse is 1 half log 1 plus phi to the minus 2 divided by 1 minus phi to the minus 2. And so this is 1 plus 1 over phi squared divided by 1 minus 1 over phi squared. This is phi squared plus 1 over phi squared minus 1. Recall that phi squared is phi plus 1 and phi is 1 plus phi minus 1. In the numerator, we have phi plus 2. In the denominator, we have phi. So we have 1 plus 2 phi to the minus 1. And phi to the minus 1 is phi minus 1. Our final result is 2 phi minus 1. The golden ratio is 1 plus the square root 5 over 2. And so 2 goes with 2, 1 goes with minus 1. And so our infinite product is equal to the square root of 5.